Hello everybody, I am Ben from Team Panic and today we're going to be looking at my 13 kilo sportsman lifting combat robot Strange Young Man. Uh, and in front of me is what is currently left of Strange Young Man. Uh, we have a lot of work to do here to get Strange Young Man back to a fighting state. But we also need to do a whole bunch of upgrades because... Uh, yeah, Strange Young Man's last outing was not very impressive at all. We had um, issues on weight, we had issues with the drive, we had issues with the lifter not uh, actually lifting people properly. So basically the whole robot needs to be redone. Um, and that is the list that we want to do today. I've actually got uh, three major things I want to change today. I want to improve the drive, I want to improve the weapon, and... Actually, four things, sorry. Shrink the whole robot shape down a lot, uh, and then also uh, work on the head that goes on top of that so that it is uh, a lot less uh, easily destroyed. It's a lot less fragile. That's the word I'm looking for, because, uh, of course, it is one of these type of heads down over here, uh, but those are just a PLA print, so the minute a saw goes through them, they explode into a million pieces. Uh, and I don't really want to be printing multiple spares and taking them all with me, so we're going to try and build something that's a little less fragile than that. Uh, now, a couple of these two main points, the shrinking down and the weapon improvements, are down to the windscreen wiper motor that is in the middle of Strange Young Man currently. This thing is massive, uh, it causes the whole robot to be really big, and it is weak. Comparatively, I should say, it is weak. Uh, for its weight and for its size, it is just not giving me the power that I need, uh, especially considering I've got quite long arms on Strange Young Man. Uh, so, yeah, it needs to go. It's basically the upshot of all of this. Uh, so that is going to be the first thing that comes out today. And we're going to be replacing it with this. This here is a relatively fast also relatively big brushless motor on a massive gearbox. This gearbox is something like a hundred and something to one. Is it a hundred and something or five hundred and something to one? Cannot remember. It's massive. Um, so we don't actually need any more gear reduction off of this motor after we get to this point. So the drive that comes out from here to the actual main weapon axle is going to be one to one off there because that gearbox takes up all of the gear reduction that we need. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to strip all of this down, but I'm going to strip this down off camera. I've got myself a little guide that I'm going to use to uh, drill some new mounting holes into the base plate, and then we're going to make a mount for this, mount all of this stuff up, and give it a test, because I am still not 100% sure that this is the way we're going to go. If we can get away with that, that'll be great, because it will shrink the whole robot down quite a lot, and it should actually have more power in it than the windscreen wiper motor. Let's get started. So, this is now kind of set up. I haven't really filmed a lot uh, getting to this point because this was only supposed to be a really quick test, but it has given me no end of issues. Uh, so I have a brushless motor in this nice plastic housing uh, with some 3D printed mounts on either end. So one goes into a gearbox and the other one holds a bearing that supports the back of the shaft, which is a good way to do this. Uh, I also have a mounting plate up the front here and you can see over here, I've got two different slots uh, for this, and that's because my CAD model for where this um, center hub section is, is off. So that's where the CAD thinks uh, this mounting plate should be, and that's where it actually is. So this is the first time I've ever had belt tensioning on something inbuilt into the robot, because we can uh, undo these bolts and slide the whole assembly backwards, and that tensions up the belt, so that is nice and tight right now. A lot of this stuff is very temporary though, so the gears we have in here are all just PLA gears at the moment. Uh, and we have other issues there too, because I got my nice shiny aluminium gears, uh, but these are actually bigger than the 3D printed gears that I have. They're supposed to be the same pitch and also the same number of teeth, but these ones are bigger and don't actually fit these HTD belts that I have. So I'm assuming these are 5mm pulleys rather than 5mm HTD pulleys. I didn't think there was much of a difference, but uh, these do not fit in the design. And also, I am kind of running out of time to get more parts because shipping in Australia takes a long, long time. So I don't know what we're going to do about that. 
we might have to keep running with the 3D printed ones, but finding a way to strengthen those and yet keep their shape. I don't really know about that. Anyway, <laughs> this is uh, now ready to do the thing that I wanted to do. Kind of nervous about this one. Uh, let's give this a shot, shall we? Cool. Startup sounds. That's nice. Nothing on the trigger. Try the turn. Aha! I'm getting an interesting sound out of something. I don't know if it's the gearbox or if it's the bearing in the back here or what it is, but I'm definitely getting a sound out of something, but that is awesome. We actually have movement. Yes, we have movement of the shaft. That is good. Okay, cool, amazing proof of concept. All right, now I need to tear all of this down uh, and yeah, sort out all the pulleys and yeah, get rid of a lot of this 3D printing, or at least as much of it as I possibly can. Wow, <laughs> and that was a big jump. Uh, basically because this project is getting away from me just a little bit. Um, yeah, so I've just spent the whole weekend at a community makerspace uh, doing pretty much what you see in front of you. Loads and loads of CNC machining so that we can get uh, some actual aluminium back plates and mounting plates for this thing. Uh, it's my first time seeing seeing see and seeing both metal and something this complicated. So it's not perfect, but it seems to be holding. I do need to pull that all apart and put Loctite in there in a minute. Uh, but that seems to work. Um, I have tried to, or I'm going to try and overcome the problem that I was having with pulleys by using TPU. These are, well, this one here is a TPU pulley that has an insane number of outside layers on it and a very high percentage infill as well. So I don't know, that I think is actually the, the biggest risk factor right now. So what we're gonna do is before I go ahead and paint everything, cause that's one of the things that needs to happen as well. Uh, I am going to put some of the stuff together and we're gonna see if these TPU pulleys can hold up to the whole thing lifting something, uh, which yeah, it's gonna be interesting. Quick little setup here. We're going to give this a tester and we're only going to test the arms to start with because I have a feeling it's not even going to be able to handle just these arms. I think the TPU pulleys might be a really, really bad idea. So uh, I'm going to stand all the way back and we're going to give this guy a quick tester. Three, two, one. That doesn't sound good. Well, it's going, but uh, the key has popped out. Huh. Okay, well, that's not good. Interesting. Oh, oh, yep, yeah, that. Did not sound good. Okay, that's enough of that for now. So I solved the problem with the uh, key here slipping out inside the uh, TPU part, but that has led us to more problems. So by changing over to this original test print, which has a grub screw inside of it, I can lift the arms up and down just like this. However, when weight is applied to the front bar, and I'm being very generous and putting the weight all the way back, uh, 
Uh, I'm getting the same issue that I was having with the other motor in here, uh, which was the big um, windscreen wiper motor. I'm having the belt slip. So I haven't really had a chance to look over that footage yet, but I've tried to tension this thing up about five times and have had no luck at all. So uh, yeah, this, this is not working. And that's a big problem because this right now it's like, four days or so before the competition, quite late at night, actually. That's when I do most of my work on combat robots. But uh, this is not good because this lifting mechanism is not gonna work at all for the competition. We can have it on the robot and it can lift the arms up and down in like tests and things, but the second we try and lift anybody, this belt is gonna skip and it's going to fail and it's gonna fall over. Uh, and this is a sportsman class. You're supposed to have a weapon, and an active weapon that you know is gonna work. So we're gonna to have to pivot uh, and we're gonna to have to use something that I kind of built as a bit of a joke for Strange Young Man last year. And that is the hammer module. This is literally a hammer in some box section, uh, which, yeah, this motor would be able to throw around. However, this motor is now way too slow for what we want uh, because we want this hammer to swing faster than we wanted these lifting arms to swing. So we're gonna change the motor and giant gearbox combo over to this, which is just a very slow 140 kV uh, brushless motor. And yeah, we're probably gonna end up having to change over these um, gears in here as well, but we'll keep the pulley as it is. And yeah, we'll see how this one goes. <sighs> we were so close. <laughs> I, I almost thought I was gonna have a really positive update here. Uh, so basically, it's now the next day. I, that last little bit I shot basically at the end of a day. And I realized when I woke up that I hadn't actually mounted everything in here properly. So down here in by the actual belt system, I hadn't put in this little back piece and I hadn't tightened these bolts down. So that's where our wobble was coming from and our belt and that's why the tooth was skipping, which is a good thing. I now know that, that's great. I now know that I need to have this all kind of pinned down and fixed, but <laughs> I fixed that and I was like, oh, I'm just gonna quickly test this off camera and I'll like, put some load on it and it will work and everything will be fine. Then I'll just do a quick little update piece here and we'll move on with the build. Ah, that's not what happened. Uh, instead, it destroyed the keyway in the 3D printed pulley. So basically there's just a lot of force involved here. Uh, trying to lift anything on the end of this arm because it is a long, long arm is a real, real pain. Um, and when you get the 13 kilos out there, it ends up being something like 300 kilogram centimeters uh, that I need of torque on this axle, which means that, yeah, the gear ratio and everything here is taking that amount of torque as well, which is just a lot. Um, yeah, so I don't really have a way of fixing that right now. So basically what we've got is uh, we're gonna move over to the hammer idea uh, because, <laughs> I, I am right down to the wire. This, this is it. Um, so much so that we're probably even only going to do a quick test of the hammer once I get that working, uh, prove that it's working, and then that's going to be the end of this video because I really need to finish doing all of this stuff so that I can finish the painting and get everything ready for the actual competition. So, um, yeah, this build has not gone as planned. <laughs> It works, ish. <laughs> so with the hammer on top, uh, the whole thing doesn't have enough torque to smack the hammer over, but without it, it's got enough speed to do the damage. So uh, I've got two options here really. I can either swap out this front section so that it's lighter, including a lighter hammer, or I can put on a bigger uh, pulley on the inside. And I think I'm gonna do both of those things because it will work better that way. <laughs> um, but, I'm running out of time for this video, so I really need to wrap this up now, uh, and I'm gonna go ahead and do all of those changes off camera before I fight Strange Young Man. Um, yeah, hope you guys have enjoyed my descent into madness on this project. Never, ever leave a featherweight build until two weeks before the competition. It's not a good idea. Um, anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed that one, and I will see you in the next video.